Hey, welcome to another episode of Camp and Camera. While it may be cold and snowy on the outside, today we're inside building some really cool parts and you don't want to miss it. Hey, welcome back everyone. Not only do we like to do DIY projects, but we like to do DIY projects that are really cool. And today is gonna to be just that. We're gonna be showing you how to make some of your own parts that nobody else is gonna have. So the handle prints with this little support in the middle, I've already kind of uh, broke it free and I just need to pop it off. It's hard to do this with one hand, but there we go. So it just pops off and it just leaves the handle behind. There'll be a little bit of cleanup to do on the bottom. I'll just take a utility knife and I'll just scrape that extra filament off the bottom there. But uh, yeah, when I do that, it'll be nice and clean. So if you're not for sure how a 3D printer works, Basically, you buy a roll of, they call filament. It looks just like a, a large roll of weed eater line. And you feed the filament through the machine, through an extruder. And when it gets to the other end, it's, it gets to something that they call a hot end. And it melts the filament. And it basically just extrudes a thin line of filament on a, on a glass plate. And then it raises up like a fraction of a millimeter and it prints another layer. And then another. And then it keeps going until you finally have a finished part. So it's pretty cool that it can take something that just looks like weed eater line and make pretty much anything you want. So I've printed out about 10 of these green handles and I need two more, so that's what I'm printing here. Um, but basically you go onto a website called Thingiverse and you type in a name of a part or an item that you want. And usually there are like pages and pages of items that pop up and you can download the files for free and just print them out. Um, you know, I've printed out some cabinet drawer handles for the teardrop, but I printed out Joanne a, a little small jewelry box. I printed out a little miniature White House. Just, you know, I think it's kind of cute, but there's just about anything you could want off this website called Thingiverse. So check this next thing out. This is a little drill press I've had for some years and the depth stop collar broke on this thing and I couldn't find one anywhere. So what do I do? I 3D print one out. And here's the cool thing. I didn't even have to design the part. I don't even know how to do that. I literally just went to thingiverse.com. I think I typed in drill press collar. A few options uh, popped up on the screen. I downloaded this one, stuck the card in the printer. A couple hours later, I had the part. This is the camera that I use for most of my uh, YouTube content. And this fuzzy thing on the end is a microphone and uh, that's a windscreen just to cut down on the wind noise. Um, unfortunately though, when I mount that to the camera, the uh, windscreen gets in front of the lens a little bit, but I just 3D printed this spacer. It's called a cold shoe that keeps it nice and away from the front of the camera. I also printed out this cup holder from a motorcycle. So I'm nerding out a little bit, but I'll have to say this 3D printer is pretty cool. I'm making my own cabinet uh, door pulls and drawer pulls. Who can say they did that? This thing is neat. Where was it at when I was building the teardrop to begin with? We're out here in the garage. It's, I don't know, it's winter time. It's like in the 30s. I don't have heat out here. But we're bundled up and we're going to do a little bit of a New Year upgrades to the Camp Easy. These are the cabinet door handles that I originally put on it when I got it built a year and a half ago. I just purchased these, I think, on eBay. They were um, 
a real thin gray colored plastic handle and I spray painted them and I wasn't really keen on having to do that, but they actually have held up. But I've 3D printed these new uh, green plastic handles and if they get scratched, they're gonna be green all the way through and they're more substantial. Hold these up, see if you can see them. They actually even have like a little flange on the back. You know, it's kind of decorative. I think these are gonna look really nice on the cabinets. So let's get these installed. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this, but one of the cool things about the 3D printer is it's so precise, it even uh, prints a screw hole in the back of this handle. Now the hole's not as big as I need, but it still provides a nice um, starting or center point from a drill bit. So check it out. These things look so fantastic. I'm absolutely loving these. And the color green was perfect to match the Camp Easy logo. So when 3D printers first came out, they were like $1,000. And there was no way I was gonna spend that kind of money to you know, be able to print parts out of plastic. But now they've came down to, you know, they're like 100, 150 bucks. It's a lot more affordable. Um, and one of the cool things is that when you download the free designs off the internet to print, um, you can resize them and make them any size you want. And that's what I did on the cabinet door handles. I went on a website called Thingiverse, downloaded the file for the handle. And when I printed it out, it was actually a little bit too big. So I just went into the program that comes with the, the printer and I scaled it down to like, I don't know, 77% and they came out perfect. And another cool thing is that, you know, you're printing the part out of a roll of filament. So everything that you print out of that roll of filament is gonna be the same color. So I was able to print out this cool soap dispenser to match and I don't have to worry about it being the same color because it came out of the same roll of filament, but this is pretty neat. I just found a green cooler for sale on overstock.com and check this bad boy out. Now if that doesn't tie it all together, I don't know what does. So from everything I've read, this cooler is supposed to be almost as good as a Yeti, but at like less than half the price. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to give this a try. And especially now that I have an ice maker that I'm carrying around with me. I mean, so what if it, you know, it doesn't hold ice for, you know, maybe as long as a Yeti. Maybe it's one day less. I'm making new ice anyway. But from what I've read, it, it may actually be as good as a Yeti. When I built the Camp Easy, I built it for the size cooler that I had. So one of the challenges that I had was trying to find another cooler that size. And I got lucky. This is a Camp Zero. It's a roto molded cooler, whatever that means. Um, it's pretty thick and heavy. It's supposed to hold ice for several days. It's got a, like a, a refrigerator grade seal around the top of the lid. Um, yeah, I think this thing is really going to hold some ice. So one of the coolest things about going to a campground in a DIY teardrop is that when somebody comes up and says, hey, that's a nice little camper. Where do you get something like that? Being able to say, hey, I built this one myself. I mean, that's just the neatest thing. And now when they say, where on earth do you find green cabinet door handles? I can say, I built those myself too. So rather than have a clock in the teardrop, I just check my cell phone in the middle of the night to see what time it is. And now I've got it, this nifty wall mounted phone holder that I printed off on the 3D printer. Hey, 
Hey there, it is 2021, it's a new year, it's in with the new, out with the old, and speaking of that, check this out. You see all that movement? I have a four inch memory foam mattress topper on top of an air mattress, and the air mattress has finally went flat. It's lost its air. I can't complain though. I've had it for a year and a half. I didn't think it would even last more than a couple trips, and it's actually did pretty well. But now that it's developed a leak and it's deflated, I'm just gonna pull everything out and start over with one really thick mattress. So let's put that in. Well, Air Mattress, you have served me well. I'm surprised you made it that long, but thank you for several good nights sleep. So I decided to go with, I call it a bed in a box. It's just a 10 inch thick gel infused memory foam mattress made by Lucid. It's similar to one we've got in our bedroom and we love it, so it should work out good in the teardrop. There we go. There we go. You hear that? That's actually the sound of the air uh, going in it. That's crazy. I don't have the bedding on yet, but the new mattress is fully inflated. We both laid on it and it feels great. Um, <clears throat> it actually had a label on it that said it was made to be used without box springs. And that's great because I've just got this laying flat on the floor and it is so comfortable. Um, this is made by Lucid. It's just something we picked up uh, cheap on Overstock, but this ought to give us a good night's sleep. So while it may be cold outside, Get inside your workshop, make some sawdust this winter, and get your own project ready for the road this spring. And check out 3D printing. It's more affordable than it's ever been. And hey, listen, if you like today's episode, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel grow more than you could ever know. And until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road.